Amazon direct to device offerings are in develop are in development. Let me explain what they mean by D2D. This is non-terrestrial networks. B, you know what I'm talking about. We've been discussing this on the channel a lot. And that is cellular coverage from space. And for those of you that don't know, Amazon has been working on what I think is called Project is it Kuiper? I think that's how they pronounce it. It's a Leo satellite constellation in which Amazon wants to offer broadband through satellite. And and that's in and of itself, you know, you, you, it's it's going to be akin or similar to SpaceX and Starlink, right, with what they have got going on. So uh, here's the news. Amazon told a regulator in the UK that it's developing technology that will connect smartphones to its planned Project Kuiper constellation of LEO satellites. Quote here from the company, Amazon's D2D offerings are in development, and um, Amazon is exploring options, and it's trying to find the most versatile technical solutions for it. The value proposition for D2D services to complement the use case of existing terrestrial mobile service because D2D offers service beyond the reach of existing terrestrial mobile networks. Okay, so Amazon's putting their name into the hat with others. So SpaceX, Starlink, T-Mobile, ASTS with, you know, like Verizon, AT&T. I'm going to throw Global Star in there with, with Apple. I'm also going to throw Skyla with Android, specifically Google, right? And and there's still other players like Viasat, right? And there's and and Dish and Boost Mobile, they're gonna be involved. Like we we have an estimate that there's gonna be three thirty billion dollars in this industry in the next decade. It now, in a way, and B, you could tell me if you think I'm wrong or or agree, just whatever it is, because I, I think it has to be asked. I don't care how many satellites. Amazon wants to deploy. It says here 3000, right? And you know, that that's a lot. That that is a lot of satellites. And they're talking about doing at least half of those within the next 2 years. So they're going to have 1500 satellites basically in the next year and a half. I think ASTS has launched a few hundred. I think Starlink launches like 50, 60 at a time. They'd have they've had a handful of successful deployments and launches these guys are all cooking and they're going in the right direction but i'm starting to ask the question is how many of these do we need how many direct to device offers are required for this segment of the industry because like right now i'm not trying to say like i don't want more competitors i'm not trying to say i don't want more offers but for for most of us, I think we agree that these are like bit connections, right? It's never going to be replacing terrestrial. So, like, does any of this make sense to you? B? To be honest with you, Snee, I'm really not opposed to additional uh service offerings from you know the amazons and and all the like i um i think i guess it's probably a good thing um the good thing for of course us as consumers is that there's never been more choice than there is now there's never been more build than there is now um there's a lot of you know competitive offerings around so the days of you know searching and wondering about connectivity are, uh, are coming to an end, which is something I think we should all celebrate. That's really what I'm taking from this. Um, I don't really have much to add outside of that. It's just a, a wonderful thing to see more people having access to services that um, that are really, really necessary. And it's going to take probably a portfolio of different technologies to be able to serve um, all the different parts, all the different um, areas of the country and of the world um, that, that may be more challenging to serve as far as a fiber to the prim. Um, sort of a solution. So other ways to be able to serve and still provide comparable um, network performance is a good thing for everybody. So that's good. I think what's going to end up happening is we're looking at it from the, the, the aspect of, you know, it's hard to make capacity from space. 
So in order to try to create more capacity, we just need more companies building capacity, right? And not relying on just one or two options to try to serve everybody's D to D offerings, right? So like Skylo and Amazon and Starlink, like we need all of them in order to create enough capacity. And then X amount of communication connections from each company can properly serve more people. You know, it, this was never going to be done with one or two companies. It was always going to take a handful. I mean, maybe that's what this is really about, right? Just not being everybody on the same solution. And then you don't really have any type of reliable service because there's no capacity. Maybe it's, maybe it all gets soaked up and then it's not very good. So, um, so yeah, I, th I, I think that's the, that's, that's more along the lines of what I'm kind of looking at it as is, uh, just getting more options because you just need more capacity.